The idea that David Cameron is in the House of Lords and not the House of Commons and therefore perhaps cannot be held directly responsible by David Lammy or by other uh, members of the House of Commons is odd in the present time, but was not at all odd in the 19th century. The last peer, the last lord, to be uh, foreign secretary was Lord Carrington, who resigned because of the Falklands. But before that, there were a huge number. The majority of prime ministers in the 19th century were in the House of Lords at some point during their career. Lord Rosebery, for example, um, though he said that he was seriously hampered by being in the House of Lords. Oh, to be in the House of Commons, there is the tragedy. Never to have come into contact with realities, never to have felt the pulse of things. That is what's wrong with Rosebery. Actually, I think that's Churchill who said that, but um, uh, they were, he was talking about Rosebery. Um, Lord Aberdeen, uh, Lord Portland, fairly ineffectual, um, and uh, George Canning, who uh, gave his name George Canning until Liz Truss was the shortest serving prime minister, uh, didn't like the Duke of Portland, um, and William Gladstone, uh, William Gladstone, um, when William Gladstone was prime minister, I think m half of his cabinet were in the House of Lords. Um, uh, Walter Badgett, in his uh, book, The English Constitution, says that the House of Lords was a reservoir of cabinet, will, uh, cabinet um, ministers. Uh, the Duke of Wellington, before he uh, became a lord, has said that nobody cares a damn about the House of Lords. He changed his mind when he went there. And the House of Lords was very effective in uh, pausing pausing important laws, um, Irish home rule and so on, and reform, um, the, the 1932 Reform Act. Uh, Lord Liverpool was in the House of Lords for 14 years. Salisbury, 13 years, both of them Prime Minister. Um, and uh, Lord John Russell spent his first term in the House of Commons and his second term from 1865 to 1866 in the House of Lords, not long. Benjamin Disraeli, uh, that sort of central, uh, the, 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 the person who defines modern conservatism, transferred from the House of Commons to the House of Lords when he was created Earl Beaconsfield in 1876. Alec Douglas Hume, however, uh, renounced his peerage shortly after taking office in 1963. So I think for a day or two he was, in fact, a modern-day peer governing um, as Prime Minister. Um, I think the Marquess of Salisbury in 1902 was the last Prime Minister to govern from the House of Lords. But, you know, where, with that with that level of history, the whinge from the Speaker, Lindsay Hoyle, about how are you going to govern, how or how are you going to answer questions from the House of Lords, the, uh, the system is in place, for goodness sake. Uh, the system was in place for Mandelson to answer questions from the House of Lords. Uh, when he was put into the House of Lords by, I think, Gordon Brown. Um, and uh, th 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 there's, plenty of, there's plenty of ways in which, in which um, David Cameron can be held responsible. And he can certainly be held responsible in committee meetings. And otherwise, I suppose his deputies will have to answer questions. But that's always been the case for a foreign secretary who is often out on the, um, uh, I was going to say out on the town, um, out uh, doing, do, do, doing diplomatic meetings around the world and, and simply cannot be present for all the scheduled meetings in the House of Commons.
So, I I th I, I think this is a this is an interesting and uh, exciting appointment, and it it lends a level of dignity simply because of David Cameron's past as Prime Minister to the office of Foreign Secretary, which has simply it's not existed before. Uh, even Lord Carrington, it, it's not existed before. Lord Carrington had previously been Defence Minister uh, in the Heath government. But um, I don't think there's an example other than Alec Douglas Hume coming back into uh, Parliament, uh, but certainly, um, so certainly not in this form. I don't. Th I don't think there is an example um, in modern political history.